You sound devastated. Yeah, I feel like I broke somebody's heart on national TV. America's gonna be watching. I'm certainly not doing this to become a C-list celebrity. Oh God. This is a reality television. It is meant to entertain you. And I think that's exactly what we're doing. We didn't miss with this one, baby. We didn't miss. We didn't miss. Was this all just for entertainment? A couple of hours, man. It's gonna be the big stage, you know. Okay, well, social media has been lighting up this season. What did your friend think about Chelsea sharing your little secret with the world? Next question. <laughs> you know, one thing about me, Dad, I'm, I'm used to big stages. How I'm looking? I'm looking good? Um, yes. The show didn't make a mockery of her. This situation did. I need to interfere with that. I get that you tell me confidence to protect your reputation, to protect your reputation. We do not want people to come here motivated by fame. It's not what this is about. It's not fair to the audience, the audience. I'm confused. I did, I did not expect to be heartbroken. It looks staged. I know I'm toxic. I know I need to fucking change. You can leave now, man. You know, America, they do love a good underdog, and they do love comebacks. Guys, I just want to say participating in Love is Blind, it's really a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. This process is unique. You know, you get a chance to essentially watch yourself, you know, like a fly on a wall to your own life. Yeah. I mean, it's not normal to watch yourself have a meltdown. I identify as a white woman. I identify as a white woman. <laughs> this is like a lot. It was tough to watch because it was such a lead up for such a crazy letdown. The world is harsh. That's right, Chelsea, the world is harsh. It is especially harsh on a group of people who live on a little strip of land called Gaza. We said we're not gonna talk about Palestine in this video. This is not why they clicked on this thumbnail and you have to pay your rent. Fine, we'll talk about Love is Blind. We do not want people to come here motivated by fame. That's not what this is about. I'm sure you've noticed in the last few years how Love is Blind has become a magnet for cloud chasers. I guess it's a good moment for that. Um, I never thought I could care for someone that would Bring me to tears. Little disclaimer, chasing clout and fame is fine if you own it. It's the pretending that's annoying, girl. Like that part where Nick and Vanessa were focusing on Jeremy and Sarah Ann and Trevor as if they're the only ones who want fame. As if not everyone else sitting up there is chasing fame. And later in the video, by the way, I'm gonna focus on Clay as a case study for this clout chasing. Because this clown is still acting like AD's the love of his life and thinks we're clowns enough to believe it. She's, she's honestly the love of my life. And I will tell you, honestly, I did make a mistake. Stop it. Get some help. But Clay, like everyone else sitting up there and everyone else watching and us and the majority of people around the world, is ashamed to admit how much he wants validation and fame and approval of others. We're all attached to our image and how we come across. Let's just stop being in denial about it. But there's someone much wiser than me who can say this. The enjoyment of a beautiful thing or a house or even a car is not necessarily non-spiritual. The attachment or the excessive preoccupation with it, with the attainment of it, that takes you away from reality, the truth of who you are from awakening. Renunciation, which traditionally is recommended as a path to awakening, is not the true renunciation is not really renouncing material things it's renouncing attachment celibacy for example refraining from sexual activity as part of renunciation without realizing that they spend large parts of the day thinking about sex <laughs> so yeah that outer renunciation is not really the main thing, the, the true renunciation is attachment to 
which operates on an inner level. And so it's always a good little test when something leaves you or is stolen. If then upset arises, then, oh, I was attached, I thought I was not. <laughs> but when you can let go of when things come and then things go, perhaps things come to you and perhaps after a while you give it to somebody else to enjoy. Hey all, it's In Denial, your drag therapist. As I always say, I'm in denial so you can wake up. This delusional cast of Love is Blind is in denial so we can wake up. I want to quickly thank all the people who donated on the last few videos of mine and the new members, thank you very much. And a quick plug of my upcoming show, which is the last performance of the show that I've been doing for the last year on April 17. We have a few more tickets left, like maybe five or six. And this show is going to be filmed for YouTube. So if you can't make it, it's coming to YouTube. Back to the subject of the video, the seeking fame and cloud chasing. One thing that I found especially annoying was, again, how Nick and Vanessa were just focusing all their efforts on Trevor and Sarah Ann and calling out this cloud chasing, ignoring everyone else who's sitting up there, including themselves, who are all dressed up like they're going to the Oscars. Like you all care about fame. And Nick was saying that people like Trevor and Sarah Ann ruined the experience for everyone else, everyone else who's authentic. And most importantly, it's not fair to the people right here, the people who have invested genuinely in what this thing is truly, truly all about. It's just wrong. It really is. Like Kwame sitting up there with his shifty eyes. There's nothing authentic or genuine about any of these people. And again, it's fine to chase fame, but just this <laughs> sanctimonious like hand clapping, like they're all in agreement. Mm, yeah, yeah, you're ruining it for everyone else. <laughs> We're all authentic, except for Trevor and Sarah Ann. Girl, they're all desperate for fame. And you know that bit where they started doing this cross promotion, where Micah and Izzy were teasing their appearance on Perfect Match. And they started it off by like teasing as if it's their marriage. It's like, mm, do you want to tell them? No, do you want to tell them? It's like, I don't know, we have a special announcement. It's like, we're gonna go on Perfect Match. Everyone's like, yay! Yeah. Little announcement. Should this be the time for them to share that with everybody? <laughs> do you yeah. want to share? So Izzy and I are actually gonna be on the next season of Perfect Match. Yeah. <laughs> Along with Jessica. <laughs> He's running yes. us. And Jessica as well, yay! So basically all these people are going on these shows to find love, but they're actually just like actors being cast for different shows to be on our television. And again, that's fine, but just you're not here looking for love. But as I said before, I really want to focus on Clay when it comes to this obsession with fame and image and how we're coming across. You know, I want to be a good guy. I want to be the best version I could be. Yeah, like when he was crying about like, oh, I just want to be a good guy. And I have to say, that was good crying. Like normally on these reality TVs, people cry without tears. But this was convincing. The chin quiver, the voice. It was like, I was like, okay, Clay. But then the second AD touched his knee, you know, to comfort him. He just kind of like stiffened up. It sucks that it wasn't like that for you. I really, you are a good guy. I, I swear, it really, it wasn't, it wasn't intentional. Like I'm watching it back and it broke my heart to. But throughout the season, the way Clay was talking about AD, it's like she's a box that needs to be checked. I feel like this is like the finals of a, a graded test paper, but you know, we're here today and I'm here to ace it, so let's go. And even from the very beginning, when he spoke about them as a couple, him and AD, he spoke about it in terms of how they're coming across. Like, ooh, we're gonna be an iconic couple. I feel like we're gonna be a great couple though, you know, like, yeah. like iconic, you know, like iconic, you know. And she's part of it too, because in that scene on the beach when they were together, she's like, yeah, I can't wait to show you off. I'm, I'm excited to like walk around the city with you yeah. and like show you off. But I do have to say, AD is a lot more naive than Clay. And I assume that you have Calibre because you tell me so. <laughs> she actually did want love out of this experiment, but she's not self-aware enough to realize why it's not working out or why that love is not showing up. I just keep feeling like I keep getting so fucking close. I know, girl. Same. Get so fucking close every time. But you're looking for it in the wrong places. <laughs> you're looking for it in the wrong places, babe. <laughs> Every time I criticize any of these people, whether it's AD with her wanting love but being unable to have it, or whether it's Clay and him being like a cloud chaser, I'm always talking about myself as well. The reason I can easily spot it in other people is because I can see it in myself. But as obsessed with fame as I am, you best believe 
I'm not going to go looking for it on TV and handing over my life to producers to exploit me for entertainment. Exploit my life and trauma for entertainment. Speaking of trauma, can we talk about Clay's dad? You know, throughout the season, Clay kept talking about his dad and how influenced he is by his dad and how suave his dad is. And we finally get to see the dad at the wedding day. And their banter right from the very beginning is like this competitive, like locker room talk. Like the very first thing Clay said to his dad, oh my God, you're gonna outshine me with the suit. <laughs> God damn, dad. God damn, you gotta outshine me. And then his father was talking about his own achievements in sports before. And Clay's listening is like, yeah, you told me. You already told me. Um, Olympic teams. Yeah. I came as close as the Melrose games. Yep, yep. And I pulled that hamstring. Yeah, I remember you told Yeah. Me. Yes, he already told you, but now he's telling the camera. So stop interrupting, girl. And even when Clay's dad was giving his son compliments, he was giving it in the context of like, oh, and you finally outran me. You know, outachieved him in sports. It's like there's no tenderness, it's just like achievement. And Clay subconsciously, I think, knew something is off about this. Me and my dad haven't really had too much deep conversations. That was the most important to me in my whole life. Because there's a film crew now. That's why he's pouring it out. But not to be so harsh on Clay's dad, because all parents view kids as an extension of themselves. They want their kids to be successful so it can reflect well on them. Everybody does that. It's every father's dream, you know, to have kids that are successful. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I get into all of that in my show, All About Me and My Mother, where I tackle my relationship with my mom. <laughs> Tickets linked below. And the trick with healing this parent-child relationship is not to expect that the parent is going to overcome that, that they don't want you to be successful and they don't care what you achieve or don't achieve in your life. That's impossible. Rather, it's becoming aware of what's going on. But both Clay and his dad are far from being aware. And it's very interesting how similar they are to each other. Because throughout the season, if you remember, Clay was constantly talking about how his dad cheated on his mom. Like anything you ask Clay, Clay, how's the weather? Mm, my dad cheated on my mom. Girl, calm down. But seeing his dad, it finally clicked and made sense. Because right from the very first scene that we met him and the crew started filming him, he was already talking about his own dad. A lot of what I was sharing with you guys, mm. um, I didn't get from my father. Because yeah. my father wasn't, I mean, he, he wasn't was, present. He wasn't present. Cleo was like, yep, he wasn't present. It's like he's heard this before. He's heard it before and that's how he learned how to do it himself. But neither Clay nor his father are aware of how much they both seek validation and why they do it. Even in the emotional scenes, they're both hyper-focused on the camera. Like the part when Clay's dad was asking him like which way to exit, he was like looking at the crew. And as he's walking out, Clay tells him, I love you. And he's like, uh-huh. And then realizing, oh, I love you. So I can leave out this yeah, way. You can leave out, yep. yep. I'll see you there. I love you, man. Mm -hmm. yep. <clears throat> love you. And as for Clay, I cannot count the times where he was just constantly searching for the camera. Like at the wedding where he was supposedly so devastated and heartbroken that he broke AD's heart. Like in the scene when he was hugging his mom, he was looking for the camera. And when he was having a scene with his dad and his dad was consoling him and, and basically validating everything that he just did, he was again searching for the camera. I love you when you were born. I love you today. Yeah. Nothing has changed. Yeah. Nothing has changed. Yeah. Nothing has changed. Yeah. So what's the moral of the story here? Again, it's not to shame people for wanting fame and validation and clout. It's just to become aware that you want it. Because when you become aware of how much you want it, you can put it in a certain place and dedicate a certain time to achieving it. And then you can go on with the rest of your life being authentic. Because when you haven't made peace with a part of you that wants validation and you pretend that you don't care about fame, but it's still inside you, you will still want to get it at every given opportunity. Like you'll be constantly cutting people off in conversations for you to get that stage time. But if you're actually honest with yourself and give yourself literal stage time, then you don't need to do it in your own life. In a nutshell, when you become clear about why you do the things that you do, the world around you becomes clearer, as does everybody in it. And you no longer let yourself reach that point like AD did, where she gets played by someone who wants fame and who convinced her that he's in love with her. Fuck it. Basically, if you're looking for love, don't go looking for it on social media or on a reality TV show. Like maybe if you're lucky enough, like Lauren and Cameron, but that's just like once in a lifetime. And that's before the show was actually about fame. So you can get on social media or go on a show like that and enjoy those spaces for what they are and not go into those spaces, expecting those spaces to heal the wounds inside, especially when the wounds are that big, like the wound of not feeling like you're enough. It's just not enough. And I don't like, I don't know what else to do really. Yeah, something like that is not going to get healed on TV or on social media. Mm -mm. Just so confused. And now that the in denial TED talk on love and fame is done, we can move on. That's what I appreciate is that we can just have a moment and then be good and then go on to the next thing. 
And the next thing for me is an upcoming video about Palestine, which I'm gonna go start working on right now. And in the meantime, like, comment, and subscribe, and I hope to see you at my show on the 17th.